And welcome to the 80 Foot Show and Tell. We're your hosts this week. I'm Noah. That's Pedro. We're hanging out. So this is the 80 Foot Show and Tell. This is the best place to show off your awesome DIY electronic 3D printing projects. Uh, we're going to take a couple minutes to uh, check out some of the 80 Foot Peeps and some guests. And then we'll turn it over to the community. If you want to get invited, head over to discord.gg slash Adafruit. We have the StreamYard link in there and show off your awesome project. Uh, go ahead and start off with Jay from DigiKey. Jay. Hello. Hey, how goes it? Not too bad. Oh, well. Working on. All right, so I built this recently. Um, literally just finished it today. This is actually a Christmas gift for a friend of mine. It's using the uh, playground, uh, circuit playground in here. And plays a little tune, lights up, and the gears rotate when given the right movement. There we go. It gets stuck sometimes, but it's a pretty much a custom like music box that I thought was just really pretty. Oh, okay. It's Looks like, like a terrarium of some sort. Like yeah, I was trying to go for like a magical forest fae type of look to it. Oh. So, yeah. That is a really cool idea. And you're documenting this? Because I would totally build this as a little like a uh, incubator for like a little plant or something that needs a bunch of humidity. Oh yeah, 100 percent I am documenting this now. I have to build another one to make sure that I got all the kinks out. So I'm currently printing out another one. I'm hoping the documentation and the blog will be out before the holidays, if not a little bit after the holidays. I, I have a lot on my plate. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think everybody does. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that. Uh, where did you get the plastic uh, cover? Uh, the plastic dome, which I can actually take off. Ha -ha. <gasps> yeah, it comes off. Nice. Here we go. But, like, yeah, uh, using this, I'm using the Adafruit Circuit Playground in there for all the nice. lights. Yeah, that's so cool. But, and uh, it's, like a, it's like a CD yeah. uh, case, the dome? Oh, no, it's a fun fact. It's a rock case. I went to Michael's oh. and I couldn't find um, a good container and they had this like container that just had rocks in it. And I was like, oh my God, how funny. That's great. <laughs> That's so weird where you find so like I, the most perfect fitting thing is like for something else. It's like, yeah, it's nice for sense. rocks. And then I just took out the rocks, put the rocks outside on the rock lawn. It was like, cool. They were right back where they were created. <laughs> great. Like, you saved the rocks. <laughs> But I'm oh, gonna have cool. all the links and all the stuff that I use for it, of course, um, in the uh, blog post because okay. the plant stuff is all from Blix and everything else is all 3D printed and gotten the rest is from DigiKey. Except for the music box, you can put any music box in here if you decide to. Oh. Uh, I will have a open like video show and tell how I did that, of course. Nice. Um, but I just wanted an easy way to turn it on and play the music, so I use spur gears and a micro oh. motor, RT motor, to just. Okay push it so when i turn it on it'll instantly just start playing and yeah, i'm not sure if you can hear it now i can hear oh, yeah. it now. yeah it's cool. playing um uh, the kingdom hearts theme song oh, um yes. really love it, so. oh, i love kingdom hearts Dude, yeah that's great yeah my kid would love yeah. that <laughs> cool yeah. but fun so like batteries in the yeah. back you can easily do the thing plus oh, it like sits nice. up on that too so oh, like I love that. that's how to uh that's it so keeps cool. the gears from grounding on the ground and then the mm -hmm. gears they do kind of get stuck but i kind of like it that way just for the fact that like if you don't like the noise they have, it'll just stop. And if you want to do it again, you just have to push it a bit. Built-in feature. Yeah, they'll eventually start going by themselves. So I that's think the it way. was the um, what is it called? Real butter, I think, is what we oh, use on the gears. Oh, it tries to lubricate the gears. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Real? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Lubricate the gears. I, real butter, right? It's for yeah, like real bearings butter. for skateboards, I think. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this problem with this is I need to go back in there with a little um filer and then yeah, file down the gears a bit ah, more i think gotcha. yeah, they are pretty printed and they do have a little bit offset but okay, okay. i kind of like them being able to stop though because sometimes you want to just yeah, yeah that's the gear so like a good feature <laughs> yeah but it's a fun little add-on that was done by accident yeah. that's awesome i love those it's like making uh winning the maker lottery <laughs> yeah it's just the right kind of speed well, let's hope my friend likes it because if they don't, I'm going to take it back. Because I was gonna say, dude, I we all love this. Yeah. <laughs> I think better, dang. Yeah. Like, now I'm be like, oh, this is mine now. Here's a card. You give it to the world, yeah. yeah. The world. <laughs> <Docs. Let's> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jake. Can't yeah. wait to build this. All right. Oh, cool. Thank Thank you. Thanks for having me. Checks. So thanks. Later. All right. Well, so Next cool. up, we we got an option. Who do we want to go to? Uh, to? Toss up. Toss up. Who wants to go? Uh, does uh, uh, Jeffler need more time? Jeff, hey Jeff, he needs more time. You're you're muted. 
let me tell you, it's been one of those weeks, but uh, yeah, I've got everyone. something to, <laughs> to talk about tonight. Uh, if you want to pull up my screen. So in CircuitPython 8, we uh, had previously introduced this thing called .env, which was lines you could put in a file called .env on your CircuitPython device and set up things like the web workflow um, and also any other variables that you want to use in your own programs. Um, kind of while we were, were working on this, and this was originally implemented by uh, Scott, we noticed, uh, hey, this format, we're not sure it's the best one. And so mm -hmm. I worked on replacing it with uh, something called settings.toml. Uh, Toml is a, uh, the, the things that we liked about settings.toml was it didn't have to, the name didn't have to start with a dot. Um, and the pattern, the way that you write a string is a lot more like Python. And there's a real standard uh, that defines what goes in a TOML file. And so anyway, I was just going to show the old and the new, because with the next beta of CircuitPython 8, if you're using the .env file, you're going to have to translate it over. Mm. Oh. Oh, no. Wrong I button. heard a, a, a keep. Like, it was the exit. Yeah, key. it was the macro <laughs> key. And it probably <laughs> nuked. The, the All right, let's jump over to Liz until he comes back. OK. <laughs> All right. No worry, it happened during the meeting. So yeah, again, that's, that's a common yeah, thing. That's fine. The UI guy needs Absolutely. to move that. Yeah. That leaves Studio over. Oh, oh no! Wait, wait, let's go back to Jeff. We've answered enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm back. I told you it's not my day. Let's let's get I mean, that, that screen in, back up again. It happened in the meeting earlier, so yeah. <laughs> we need to send that. Oh, look! There's a having issues button right next to the leave <laughs> studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, Basically, the overall structure of the file is very similar. You've got one line for each variable that you want to define. Um, but the difference is, in the old format, if it was a string, you didn't necessarily have to put quotes around it. But if you wanted to, then it had to be the single quote. Oh, and by the way, they, they support comments. Mm, yay. Um, in That's the awesome. new file, of course, I think the everyday Python style that we're familiar with, we use double quotes kind of as the default. So if it's a string, it has to be quoted. You can't leave it off. And it's double quotes. And I can't type. But basically, you're just going to open up your file. You're going to find every line that is a string and make sure that it's double quotes. Change it from single quotes or nothing into double quotes. Uh, and save it as settings.toml, and you'll be good to go. Um, so just a big item to be aware of when you upgrade from beta 5, which is the current one, to beta six coming out at the end of this week or the start of next week. And uh, that's what I've got for you. Very cool. cool. A, right. a lot of waiting for a really kind of boring brain dump, but uh, we want people to know. <laughs> no, that's uh, definitely useful. Cool. And I think uh, I think during the meeting, you guys mm -hmm. said that you were working on a, some guides also that are gonna explain this. And Yeah, so we're gonna update some existing guides uh, because that's there are some in the learn system um, that talk about this file and like, um, yeah, you, you can also, you know, put your AIO, uh, Adafruit IO key in here and get it from your program. And so it'll be a good capability, but we just need to show people how to do it. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right. Sweet. Also, oh. there's no guide yet, but I got a next mouse. And so we're going to make that wow, work. Cool. Python soon. Wow. Can you give us a profile shot of it real quick? Oh, yeah. yeah. The angles. I don't know how thick it is. Yeah, it's got this oh, wow. this same rubber line that the keyboard does, so it must oh, have been yeah. like a stylistic thing. Huh. But it's a it's a kind of slightly spongy rubber, and then of course it's got a ball. Oh. It's got the little lock unlock ball, yeah. mm -hmm. and just two buttons. So no mouse wheel, no middle button. No. <laughs> so it won't be it won't be great for using on a computer. But mm -hmm. if you really love this mouse, you can daisy chain it through the next keyboard, and then uh, mm -hmm. read both the keyboard and the mouse with one circuit Python device. So that'll be cool. Oh, nice. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. We'll All right. For that one. Thanks. All right. Have a good evening. See you later. All right. All right. Yeah. We are going to go to the next Adafruit peep, and that's Liz. Hello. Liz. Hello. How's it going? Hey. Good. good. How are you? Uh, so this is a personal project I'm working on, uh, which is basically uh, using circuit Python running on a Raspberry Pi Pico um to build a quantizer uh for Eurorack, which basically means that i'm taking in random voltages to an adc and reading them which you can see on the screen there and then there's some stuff in the code that um basically maps it to the nearest voltages that match notes and then that's averaged through the dac and goes out 
Um, so right now I've got functionality so that these keys can determine what notes are turned on and there's two separate channels. So if I turn the rotary encoder, you'll see different lights light up and different notes are noted there. Uh, and I have it going out to two oscillators that I'll turn up now so you can hear. Uh, so the idea will be that um, I'll eventually have four in, four out uh, for some polyphony. And you can do any scale and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I like the soundscape sound of that, too. <laughs> it's like a yeah. creepy then, uh, nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, with four, um, too, then you can do stuff like uh, polyphonic chords and things like that. So um, wow. pretty excited about that. And then there's a project we worked on together previously called the MIDI Melody Maker, uh, where it was basically these, like, MIDI note patterns uh, that were generated. And I want to bring that into this too, where it would take oh. gate inputs to trigger predefined notes from the DAC out as well. Um, but right now, just working on the quantizer stuff. Wow. Super cool. That's going to be super fun. Yeah. 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 And lots of little melodies kind of auto generated. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, keep yeah. showing us project, uh, progress on it. Looks really fun. We'll Maybe. Do project later maybe um, <laughs> i don't know it's pretty specialized and kind of uh, okay so yeah i think i'll keep it like personal for now <laughs> that's cool all right maybe later all uh, right and, uh, unless lamar's watching he's like i don't want that let's watch Liz. all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Have a good one. Yep. all right that's all the adafruit peeps let's go ahead and jump into the community yeah we got yep. joey joey hey, hey joey Howdy, y'all. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good, good. Oh, well. Um, so this week, I took a little uh, Christmas tree, and I upgraded it with some NeoPixels, which um, is fun on its own. But I also wanted to run off a battery, which means you got to, you know, conserve your power. And I wanted to have it turn on and off on a schedule. So um, I used my, I'm going to unplug this guy, I made a little LCD feather wing to make oh. a very simple UI for uh, setting when you want the tree to turn on and how long you want it to stay on. Oh, so I'm going to cool. just, uh, with one, using the boot button on my uh, ESP32 S2 Feather, let's hold down and you can say, I want it to turn on at oh, 10, nice. 11 a.m. <laughs> I want it to turn, stay on for like two hours. Oh, wow, cool. So it's like this uh, like little control panel for your Christmas yeah. tree. And it uses CircuitPython Deep Sleep. So whenever the tree's not on, mm. it's actually consuming only about a milliampere of power with the oh, wow. display still on. So you got this nice little clock interface that stays on mm -hmm. tells you what time it is and when your tree is on cool. it kind of shows an icon saying you're glowing and yeah whenever it's not it's deep sleeping so i figured if i run this tree for four hours a day i can run it for a full week which will get me oh, wow. christmas and then i'll have to recharge it but oh, that's <laughs> nice. a good plan. and then the other wow. cool thing about this is i used y'all's new um, user pages feature on learn guides so i wrote a whole yes. learn guide about it yeah. and uh, showed how i used the power profiler to measure how much current it's consuming and oh. deep sleep when it's awake. And yeah, it's, it was really fun. It was the first time I'd used the user pages feature and yeah, it was really, if you, I'll, I'll post the link in the Discord. Yeah, so please. yeah it was a really good out. use of it. You know that as soon as we saw that go in, we, we were all sharing like, <laughs> oh yeah, about it. it's, <laughs> we must love. Joey's doing it exactly yeah, how we- Yeah, to, to Liz and the team behind that because well, we had oh, some yeah. glitches and stuff and it got all fixed up. So I was able to Great post idea, the whole yeah. thing and yeah, oh, really cool. stoked. Yeah, I know. We're stoked to see what other people would do too. But yeah, perfect example, yeah, Joey, of how to, to test, yeah. yeah, really good way to do it and getting all the uh, issues sorted out. How cool. Yeah. I love the yeah. UX too that you have on the, uh, for navigating it. Like how it just says one hour. Usually it's a lot more harder than that. Like setting like a microwave yeah. or something. It's like, dude. Totally. totally. Simplify actually, it like that. <laughs> if you read the guide, like I also use the Adafruit debouncer library, which uh, oh. it gives you a, a number for how long the button was held down. So you can actually use one button okay. for both a long press and a short press. Oh, and then you have this like yeah. kind of, with just one button, you can actually yeah. do a kind of a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah. Cool. Please post the link. Yeah, everybody yeah. has to see this. Yeah, folks oh, I will. Question, technical questions. <laughs> yeah, they're already yeah. asked questions, yeah. dude. Yeah, I love yeah. that UX. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joey. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. Have a good Merry evening. Christmas. <laughs> have a great Merry Christmas. Yeah. Bye. All right. Well, that was a lot that of was freaking awesome. projects. Thanks, everybody, for coming on. Um, we have Sean Park coming up yes. at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Eastern time. He's going to be doing JP's workshop. And I think there's so, a bunch of new uh, cool stuff coming out. And there I is think, some new. Stuff. I don't want to say that yeah, just in case it. it's not there yet, yeah. <laughs> but some cool but yeah, stuff be being added out. for orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, there would be a coupon code as well, folks, want to get 10% off. So check yes. that out. It'll be at eight. All right, I think we're done. We'll yeah, be here it. next week. Uh, I think Liz is hosting next week. So folks we'll be come here. in. We'll be here hanging out. Thanks for showing off your projects, yeah, guys. We'll be hanging out in the Discord for a little bit. So thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.